بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ویلکم ٹو سالار خان یوٹیوب چینل وی ٹو ڈے وی اسٹڈی دا بریک ڈاؤن میکینزم آف واٹ آف اے گیس انسولیشن ان دا پریویس ویڈیو وی اسٹارٹ اسٹڈنگ اباؤٹ دا گیس انسولیشن ویئر وی ان دا پریویس ون وی اسٹارٹ وی اسٹڈی دی دی امپارٹنٹ کیریکٹرسٹک فیچرس دیٹ اینی گیس مسٹ ہیو ان آڈر ٹو بی یوزڈ ایز این انسولیٹر ٹو ڈے لیٹ می گیو دی ہیڈنگ آف گیس انسولیشن فاسٹ and then we see what we see the breakdown mechanism of it so i told you that in order for it to be used you need to know first the root cause of the failure you need to know the breakdown mechanism so i will give the heading of what of the breakdown mechanism as well now what is breakdown so breakdown is the loss of insulation properties the loss of insulating properties which means what that the material has became a conductor for and no no longer remain uh, uh, an insulator right so how does it happen what causes this so that we'll see so the main thing is uh, uh, you could have charge carriers if i say about charge carriers will break down occur due to charge carriers of course and what are those so those are electrons and then positive charges and negative or i would say the positive ions and negative ions if you've got electrons so definitely you would have positive ions because electrons are rejected from neutral atoms and then electron is ejected and you got a positive ion whereas the negative i a negative ion i cannot guarantee we'll see that in the upcoming videos firstly we talked about a phenomena that was photo ionization so i would say that is an ionization due to the photon number one is due to photon and that is something that we cannot get rid of and why is that because of the extraterrestrial radiations they are coming from the outer space what do you have you have cosmic rays you've got the ultraviolet rays right so that is due to that yes in uh, you've got and uh, in the cosmic rays you've got your x-rays and gamma rays etc etc we did the calculations we did the calculations in the previous videos some of the energy was enough to uh, you know ionize an atom some of them were not so what do i have is if i discussed photo ionization in the previous video i have discussed photo ionization we will just have a little brief of it so photo ionization we already discussed this was due to photons right and due to the radiations that are coming from the outer space so let's say if i talk about it that i have a gas uh, and let's say uh, so visible spectrum first of all if i talk about the visible spectrum so visible spectrum wavelength has no sufficient energy to ionize it and we saw it right if i talk about any energy let's suppose i take x ray if i talk about an x ray so what do i have is let's suppose the lambda the wavelength is 100 nanometer so this implies what that you've got the energy of the photon is 1240 upon lambda so this would come out to be 12.4 electron volt which is a sufficient amount of energy it may be uh, you know able to ionize some gases like uh, oxygen etc this may be sufficient for some but not for others right yes similarly if i talk about 550 nanometer what range is this or you know about different ranges so let's suppose i talk about the lambda of 550 nanometers so what this is in which spectrum it lies whatever it is so if i have increased this so the energy would come out to be this is only a 2.24 electron volt so have a look not sufficient to ionize the x-rays are able to ionize but again you see is that how much of uh, uh, the x-rays are you know entering into the earth surface N not enough due to the ozone layer if i talk about the lambda of 18 nanometers in the ultraviolet region in the ultraviolet region this is i believe in the in the what region in the visible spectrum yes if i talk about in 18 nanometers in the ultraviolet region so the energy of the photon would be equal to 1240 upon 80 is about 15 electron volt so now have a look this energy is far greater then we had the infrared radiation so for that we talked about e is equal to 3 by 2 kt was the relation so a very huge amount of temperature was required which is not physically possible over here on sahara desert the most uh, temperature recorded is the highest temperature is recorded 54 degree centigrade or 64 degree centigrade i believe but if you calculate over here let's suppose let's suppose for e is equal to uh, 
E is equal to 3 electron volts. You calculate the temperature, it would come in thousands of degrees centigrade. So that is not possible over here. So what do we do is we leave this. We cannot get rid of this. This is something that we cannot get rid of. Right? It has to be there. A very small conduction current has to be there in any gas insulation at room temperatures and these extraterrestrial radiations are the cause. What is the amount in this? So that would be nanoamperes, that would be in microamperes, whatever, but it would be and we cannot get rid of it. Right? This is not leading to breakdown. This has a very few number of electrons, a very few amount of current, so no impact on the insulating properties and hence no breakdown. Let me apply voltage to it. Applying electric field. Applying electric field to the, L to the insulation. Applying electric field by means of what? By application of voltage, of course. So you've got two, two electrodes, metal, metal electrodes, and you've got a voltage applied. So if this is the cathode, cathode is the negative one. And you have the positive one is the anode. You've got an electron over here. So first, the electrons were moving randomly, but now with the application of the electric field, with the application of the voltage, they will move in a certain direction that is towards the anode. I have given it a proper direction. They would align in a proper direction. When I apply electric field or apply voltage to it, the electrons would gain energy from the electric field. What is that energy? That would of course be kinetic energy. And that kinetic energy is given by half m and ue squared. This electron that was already present has now gained what? Has gained energy from the from the what? Uh, from the electric field and has gained energy from the electric field. So what can you do is you can find out now that how much energy is required. So you can find out the corresponding velocity or if you have the velocity you can find out the corresponding energy. For example, for example if I say that the, the that, that, that let's say you have what? You have a 3 electron volt of an ionization potential of a gas. So how much velocity of an electron should have so that it is able to ionize this gas? So you can just find it from this formula. This, uh, uh, this would come out to be what? 2 times the kinetic energy and divide by the mass of the electron and hole under the root. So you just put down the values 2 multiplied by 3 and you have to convert this into uh, joules. So 1.6 into 10 to the power negative 19 and divided by the mass of electron which is 9.11 into 10 to the power negative 31 kg and this is whole under the root. So this comes out to be what? The velocity of the electron and this is equal to what? I have it over here. This is about 10 to the power 6 meter per second. This is about 10 to the power 6 meter per second and which is, uh, f uh, you know, this is the minimum velocity required to eject the electron from this atom. The velocity of the electron is in the order of 10 power 6 or 10 power 5. So what do you have in this process when you've applied the electric field, the thing that is happening is that you have a neutral atom A, you hit it with an electron. You have hit it with an electron, what do you have is, if the electron energy is greater than the ionization potential of the atom, what do you have is, you have a positive ion formed, you have an electron formed. So, but you have an electron ejected from this ion, you had this pre-ionization electron as well or preliminary electron, so you've got two electrons over here, which means an electron pair is formed in this process. One is your initiatory electron and the other that has been emitted from this neutral 
atom. So charges have begun to form and this is a collision, uh, you know, accumulative process. Now these two electrons would hit further two more uh, atoms and four electrons would be formed. Those four would then hit more atoms and more electrons would be formed. The number of electrons would increase, the number of uh, gap the amount of gap current would increase and you could say that eventually it would lead to breakdown. If I say that I have a, a, you know a, a dx strip over here a, a length of dx strip which is at a distance x from the cathode right this is a strip let's suppose and dn are the number of electrons over here in this strip so what do you have is that this dn would be directly proportional to what to to the number of electrons the total number of electrons times the the, the thickness of the strip right yes and then what do you have is that dn would be equal to alpha times uh, n dx alpha is the constant of proportionality and is known as the first ionization constant and which definition is given in the book and it is something like that uh, the number of electrons formed by the first collision per meter length right yes so if i have what uh, if i put the d n over here if i bring this dn by n over here and this is alpha times dx so what do you have and now i integrate it so initially you have an n naught number of electrons those are the initiatory electrons that are bound to be present in the material and the final number of electrons are n the total number of electrons and over here i do it from zero to d uh, which would be i believe the total length the total spacing between the electrodes is d so over here you would get what you would get an ln of the natural log of n by n naught and over here you would have an alpha times d alpha times d now i would be taking the exponential n by n naught would be exponential of alpha times d or i could say that the final number of electrons are n naught exponential of alpha d now the current in the gap which is i depends on the number of electrons so i could say that my current i in the gap is that preliminary or initiatory conduction that in nano amperes i talked about on micro amperes is i naught this is usually the pre-ionization times exponential of alpha d so this is the current that would be cost right yes Let's say I talk about an I naught of 1 milliampere. 1 milliampere. Let's suppose I have uh, it over here in the uh, book. I have an example. This alpha is what? Alpha is the Townshend's first coefficient defined as the number of electrons produced by collision ionization per incident electron write it for yourself the number of electrons produced by primary electron per unit part length so have a look let's say i have an i naught of 0.01 milliampere so i have a small current i naught which is of a 0.01 milliampere and then the alpha is 400 meter inverse is the unit this is an example alpha is 400 meter inverse and the distance is let's say 5 centimeter uh, or this is 0.5 meters 0 0.05 meters sorry 0 0.05 meter so what do i have i can calculate the current i can calculate the current is uh, uh, that i would be equal to i naught 0 0.01 into 10 to the power negative 3 times exponential of 400 multiply 0 0.05 this comes out to be 4.85 kilo ampere so have a look this is a huge amount of a current 4.85 kilo ampere is quite a huge amount of a current and where do you get this much of a current where do you get this much of a current so you get it in the arcs 
arc is formed where practically if i talk about it so this is formed in the when the contacts of the circuit breaker open when the contacts of a circuit breaker open it is a company uh, it uh, an arc is established and it, it, an arc has two things the first is a very high current in the kilo amperes range and a very high amount of temperature in thousands of degrees centigrade centigrade fahrenheit so what do i do with this much of a current how if this current flows into the system kilo amperes of current flows into my system what will i do how will i save my system so I cannot let it flow into my system, right? Yes, so what do I do? This is the problem of insulation and the subject that we're studying is insulation. So we'll see this, right? So in this video, in this particular video, what did we saw that if I apply an electric field, what happens is that the electron would gain energy from that and, and it will form more, you know, collision ionization will occur and you have an avalanche leading to an avalanche leading to a breakdown. You can expect a current in the kiloamperes range. This is a practically possible when the contacts of the circuit breaker open. What is the circuit breaker? It's a protection device. It has to prevent the flow. So, what do we do? Let's say we we'll talk further about it in the next video. In this one, we only talked about an electron. We talked about photon previously. Over here, we talked about electron. The positive ion, we yet have to talk about it. So let's say we talk about the positive ion in the next video. You have to watch all these videos in a series together to understand the complete breakdown mechanism. Over here you will say that we only talked about the electron energy. But that's not the case. Watch the complete videos. You will understand it. Till the next video, take care. Goodbye.